Hey guys, hi, welcome back once again. My name is Vaishali and today I'd like to talk about the nuances of our strengths and our weaknesses. How at times our strengths can also be our biggest weaknesses and how our weaknesses can also at times be our biggest strengths. And in order to understand those nuances, I'd like to share this clip over here, which I had received from an uncle of mine. But these particular fish have a unique ability. They are flying fish. With an extra thrust from their tails, the flying fish get airborne once more. With a good wind, they can glide for hundreds of meters. But this is just what the frigate birds have been waiting for. When frigates join the hunt, the flying fish are literally caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. If the flying fish get too much lift, they become easy prey for the frigates. If they dive to evade attack from above, they could fall into the mouths of the Dorado. Now, when I saw this clip, I was amazed at the unique characteristic traits of these amazingly beautiful flying fishes. Here were these fish who could swim like a fish and even fly like a bird. Here were these fish who could inhabit two different atmospheres at the same time in the same breath. So who are these flying fish or swimming birds? And maybe they are both at the same time. Maybe they get a unique chance to experience life both as a fish and as a bird. And what an enriching experience that must be, but not without its consequences. As enriching as that is, as enriching that might be, when they fly like a bird, they are at a risk of being eaten up, being swallowed up by bigger birds. When they dive underwater like a fish, when they swim like a fish, they are equally at a greater risk of being eaten up by bigger fish, by being chased by bigger fish. Which of course must feel like a woohoo, a very alive kind of an experience that look, I can choose to be a fish at one moment and I can choose to be a bird in the next moment. But not without a certain sense of anxiety running through them to not be eaten up either in the water or in the air. And that sense of anxiety which helps them survive moment to moment, helps them experience life both as a bird and as a fish, probably also gives them a chance to be more present with themselves moment to moment to moment. For if they are not present in the now, if they are not tuned in with the now, they just might be eaten up, gulped up by a bigger fish or a bigger bird. For they are more mindfully able to regulate it moment after moment after moment and not let it turn into a disorder. They don't find themselves stuck either in the water or in the air for they are constantly being aware. They are being mindful of the choices that they are making moment after moment after moment and every moment being experienced as it presents itself without neglecting it, without disregarding it, and without abandoning it. Well, then am I saying that anxiety is good? 
And what essentially I'm saying is that we all have anxiety at the base level, which helps us survive. But not being able to regulate that anxiety may need us to ask for help, may need us to address it rather than repress and suppress it. Likewise, let's look at some other aspects of our human emotions, of our human existence, and how at times they can be our biggest strengths and our biggest weaknesses as well. So if you consider another aspect, which is courage. Now, courage cannot necessarily arise if we do not fear something. And if we need to embody and experience the aspect of courage within us, we need to be able to face our fears as well. And we need to be able to first address them as well. So then let's consider the movie, Oh My God 2, wherein this particular individual and then his family had to show courage in order to address what had been repressed in the educational institution for so long, what had been unaddressed and repressed in the culture, in the society for so long. Now, was that easy? Of course not, as it's shown in the movie that the protagonist even tries to run away from confronting his own fears. He is wanting to escape the situation for the time being, so long as he can avoid facing his fears. Till he is given the message to confront it, to address it. Because running away from it will only make that fear chase him farther. And when he decides to confront his fear and when he decides to step into his courage, he is being ridiculed, he is being laughed at, he is being shamed and he is even being outcasted for some time. And so as much as addressing our own fears and stepping into our own courage aligns us more with ourselves, makes us trust ourselves more, it might also come with other repercussions wherein we are being rejected, wherein we are being abandoned, wherein we are being outcasted from our own community, from our own society, from our own culture, from our own family at times as well. So in a way, we can correlate it with social media, wherein some people say that it's a bad influence, while others say that it's a good influence. Some say it's the positive side of technology, while some others say it is the negative side of technology. Are those things absolutely true? Is social media our biggest strength or our biggest weakness? And maybe the nuances in understanding that none of them are absolutely true or false, that none of them are absolute strengths and absolute weaknesses, that none of them are absolutely positive and absolutely negative, for they all have nuances to them. And it is these little nuances that makes life enriching, that makes life rich as an experience to have that calls us to make, that gives us an opportunity to make more mindful choices. And in my personal opinion, anything in extremes is unhealthy, is dysfunctional, causes more disorders, causes more unease than ease. So let's try and understand these little nuances of our existence, of our experiences. Let's even try to address where and how our fears are serving us or maybe not even serving us. Let's even try to address how our courage might be serving us and might not be serving us also. In what manners it might be serving us and might not be serving us as well. Where our loyalties might be serving us and where our loyalties might not be serving us as well. Where we repressing and suppressing ourselves and not expressing ourselves completely and authentically might be serving us and where and how it might not be serving us. And then even looking at where we expressing ourselves completely and authentically might be serving us and might not be serving us and in what ways. So let's try and understand these beautiful little nuances that makes our existence so enriching, that makes our experience as a human so enriching. Let's try and see, just like the flying fish, how our unique characteristic traits can at times be our biggest strengths and at times also act like our biggest weaknesses as well. And how do we address all of those things? How do we make choices that enables us experience and express all of those things? 
to make more mind mindful choices for ourselves to help us make choices that help us align more with our inner selves let's try and do that for ourselves and i will see you once again the next week till then stay tuned in and guys if you do like the contextual content of these videos please do like share and subscribe